My name is Alka Siju, second year English, Painur College. Chapter Parting from the Path of Life, Jeevitha Bada, Churugad, Govinda Bisharadi. Why has this fellow not been taught anything? That was the question that irked my uncle, Kunyamaman, the most. The question that everyone, neighbors, relatives, and guests regularly asked. An inquisition that had begun the day my father returned me to the house. It was to escape from this question that, even though he was busy with the construction of a house for Ammai, his wife, Kunyamaman himself, found time to teach me astrological calculations and write quatrains from the Narayaniyam for me on big palm leaves. As part of the lessons, he would also beat me from time to time. When my mother said, My son must not be beaten, Kunyamaman stopped teaching me. How was one to teach without beating? Will the public be pleased if one is left alone like that? Why is the fellow not being taught anything? The public would shoot needless fire shafts. Kunyamaman managed to face many a man saying, This much study is enough. It is not with studies that I survive. He knows reading and writing and astrological calculations too. Could a boy barely seven years old read, write and make astrological calculations? People could not believe it even though Kunyamaman said so. They reframed the query. Can't you take him to some school and have him study up to the 10th standard? It was a time when school education had begun to spread to rural areas. Children from many houses belonging to my caste, that is, the Pisharides, had been sent to schools in Perindalmana, Manjiri, Chirpalashiri and so on. Why is this child Govinda Pisharidi not being educated? Paradil Krishna Nayar, who had a nephew in Perindalmana High School, would ask. Cheratu family is wealthy. There is only one boy. The child is intelligent. It is sad that he is not sent to school. Not that I can afford it, yet I send our Govindan to school. It's all very well for Krishna to say that. Kunyamaman would flare up. You have a salary. I have no such thing. There may be wealth in this family, but then there is a wealth of nephews and nieces as well. Kunyamaman even believed that Krishna Nair was mocking him because there was peer competition. Relatives would admonish him. Now, now, Kunyapadi can if you are willing. Your nephew must be sent to school. If you educate him and get him a job, won't it be good for the family? and go on to cite the names of some of the members of the community who had studied and entered government surveys. Like a monkey on a lawn tree pelted with stones from all sides, Kunyamaman flinched from the public assault of questions. This question of an expensive education for his nephew had come up at a time when he was squirreling away money from the family income to buy a house and a piece of land for his wife. That was why Kunyamaman preferred to ignore some of the queries on the matter. If you bring this child up as a savage, one day he will bite off Kunyapadi's head, declared Raghuva Pisharidi of Andal, the son of a fortunate Vilemaman on one of his visits. Look here, Raghuva Pisharidi pointed to the scar on his wrist. What's that? Raghuva's teeth marks. Nani Kuti's son. Raghuva Pisharidi narrated that story. I am fed up with that fellow. He lies, steals, commits adultery. However much we consult him. He merely nods and goes on as before. Finally, I threw him out of the house. After that, more trouble. That thief started loitering around stealing our kannam rice from the chambal. Now, Kunukuti, Raman and I are left to starve at Andal. He steals the rice, eats some, sells the rest, buys beedies and smokes away his earnings. One day, I hide myself in the chambal kitchen. The thief arrived, lay his hands on the chamb. The vessel of Kannam rice measuring six nadis. I jumped up and caught him. Kunukuti, Raman and two blind dependents wait hungrily at home. I too am hungry. Don't you dare touch this rice, Raghavan? I said. Don't I have to eat then, Raghavan Amman? Asked that accursed one. I pulled the chum and he pulled it the other way. In the end, he bit me sharply and forced me to drop the chum. I noticed that I was dripping blood. Wouldn't blood in the temple flow desecrate it? I stepped out quickly, pressing the wound to stop the bleeding. Kunyamaman and Raghav Pisharidi stood peering at the scar. The scar revealed to Kunyamaman the consequences of having a nephew in the family who could turn perverse and rebel savagely. There are two chief enemies for a matrilineal family head. 1. The efficient husband of a woman in the family. 2. A grown nephew who bites back. Kunyamaman had no fears regarding the first. My father was a very meek man. 
he would not bite even if you slip your hand into his mouth. My sister Kutti Oppor's husband was living, breaking the alliance to avoid a quarrel with Kunna Maman. And the other sister, Malu Oppor's husband, Black Pateri, was a fool. But the things that might happen when the seed of a nephew becomes a tree. Translated by C.B. James About the Order Churugadu Govinda Pisharidi, 1914-1976 Popularly known as Churugadu, was born in Pulamandol in Malapuram district and received his early education under the local gurus and in local schools. His professional career began as a school teacher. Later, he joined the faculty of the Sanskrit College at Pavarati. He retired as professor of Malayalam from Government Sanskrit College, Patambi. Churugadu was a committed writer, a communist from youth. He resigned his job at Pavarati in 1942 in order to take up full-time political work. He was arrested and jailed for three years in 1948. As a party activist, he concentrated on cultural work and had associated himself with the party organs, Navalogam and Deshabhimani. As a writer, he was quite prolific and published works belonging to all important genres, including poetry, fiction, drama and narrative prose. His novels, short stories and dramas, written in the manner of social realism, are significant for the insight they provide into the life of the drowned trodden in pre-independence Malabar. His major novels are Manminda Maril 1954, Muttashi 1959, Shinidasha 1959, Devalogam 1971, Bhuprabhu 1976, and Marana Padram 1977, Mudra Modram 1954, Chugutandakuda 1958, and Churugathinda Churugadagal, Sampurna Samharam 1995 are his major short story collections. His play, Nammalonna, 1948, is regarded as an important piece of committed theatre that paved the way for the consolidation of the communist ideal in the minds of the people of Malabar in the post-independence period. Jeevitapada, 1974, which has attained the status of a classic in autobiographical narration, is undoubtedly the best work of Churgaad. It fetched for him the Kerala Sahitya Academy, 1975, and the Sahitya Academy, 1976 awards. Its subtitled Parting from the Path of Life, Jivitapada, presented here, is chapter 8 of that section, pertaining to the author's childhood. It narrates the events in the life of young Churugada, living under the care of his uncle and his childhood experiences leading up to the death of his father. Glossary and Explanations Irked, Irritated Inquisition, a period of prolonged questioning, astrological, related to the study of the supposed influence of star and planetary positions on human lives and events. Quadrants, a stanza with four lines where alternate lines rhyme. Query, a question, a doubt or request for information. Admonish, warn or scold. Cite, to prefer to something or someone, provide examples. Pelted, struck or beaten continuously flinched, winced or made a sudden movement due to fear, pain or surprise. Assault, to make a physical attack. Squirreling away, hiding away money or precious things in a safe place. Savage, a wild or violent person. Adultery, sexual intercourse with a person who is not one's pose. Counsel, advice, loitering, waiting around without any purpose. Desecrate, defile or pollute. Perverse, wrong in an offensive way or correct. Matrilineal, based on the female line. Meek, gentle and submissive. Comprehension questions, answer in a sentence or two. First one, what was the question that everyone frequently asked Kunnamaman? Second, what did Kunnamaman do to escape from this question? Third, why did Kunnamaman stop teaching the narrative? Fourth, what explanation does Kunnamaman give to Parudil Krishna Naya for not sending the narrator to school? Fifth, what according to the relatives was the advantage of sending the narrator to school? Sixth, what made Kunnamaman ignore the sum of the queries regarding the narrator's education? Seventh, why did Raghav Bisharadi throw his nephew Raghavan out of his house? Eight, how did the nephew Raghavan manage to make a living after being thrown out of the house by his uncle? Nine. What was the inheritance system followed by the narrator's family? Based on this, who was considered as the head of their family? 10. Who, according to the narrator, were the chief enemies of a matrilineal family head? 
paragraph questions answer in not more than 80 to 100 words first one what were the explanations given by Queen Maman for not sending his nephew to school are those the real reasons behind this decision justify second describe the incident that finally persuades Queen Maman to send the narrator to school third what was the experience narrated by Raghuva Pisharati regarding his nephew four who, according to the narrator, were the chief enemies for a matrilineal family head. How does Kunamaman deal with these threats? Essay questions. Answer in not more than 200 to 250 words. First question. Based on the events described in Parting from the Path of Life, give a brief description of Kunamaman's character and his role in the narrator's life. Second one. Read the following quotes from Parting from the Path of Life. A. The day my father returned me to the house. B. You have a salary. I have no such thing. There may be wealth in this family, but then there is a wealth of nephews and nieces as well. C. There are two chief enemies for a matrilineal family head. What do these phrases or sentences convey about the matrilineal system followed in the narrator's community? Third question. What silent features of Kerala's past can be identified in the autobiographical sketch of Churugada? 